what's up YouTube? It's your boy Dr. James D, aka The Fresh Pharmacist. Well, just got home from work just a little while ago. It was a ridiculously long day, but now that I'm home, I get to chill a little bit, kick your feet up, maybe relax, listen to some tunes, and maybe have a discussion with you. Uh, what do you want to talk about today? Or what should we talk about today? Well, to talk about medications, drugs, and you. Okay, so I do notice that when you guys go and see your doctor, after you come down and get your prescription, you guys actually have a lot of questions that I can tell you weren't really asking your doctor at the time when you probably should have. I don't know what the case is, maybe it's just the discomfort of being in a doctor's office. I totally understand. I hate sitting on that bed and have that little white piece of paper that you have to sit on. It's just totally uncomfortable. But regardless, um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. If you like what you're hearing, press the like button and press the subscribe button because we have a lot more conversations coming up. All right, talking about things that you may not want to discuss, well, I guess it's best we get it out in the open now because there's going to be a lot of episodes where it might be uncomfortable. So how about we just hop a seat on the couch and we can just get things out in the open. Okay, so the funky thing about herpes is a lot of people can be asymptomatic, which means they show no symptoms whatsoever. So even though you may not have any sores or lesions or bumps, the person, your girlfriend or boyfriend, might actually develop those even though you're perfectly fine. And the thing about that is, once that happens, <laughs> you are in a lot of trouble. Don't believe me? Ask this guy. So, that being said, what's one of the main things you might think contributes to a lot of the uh, contraction of STDs nowadays? What's the modern thing that's changed from when our parents used to date? Well, why you think it over? Let's talk about our parents. So, uh, our parents back in the day when they were dating, how do you think they did it? I'm guessing it went something a little bit like this. I like to go on bicycle trips too. Do you? In miniature golf, you're not bad. Yeah, and weenie roasts and square dances. <laughs> so taking that air into consideration, think about how it used to be back in the day. You had a much smaller dating pool, you have to be a little bit more formal about how you ask people out. You may have to meet the parents on the first date, come up to the door. You know, the whole chivalrous thing. That's not the case nowadays. It's completely changed. For example, take this in consideration. Yeah, thanks to Tinder, he's had a different girl every night this week. What's Tinder? It's an app for your phone where two strangers can hook up for a dirty liaison. What, like hookers? No, just two horny people with phones. Wait, I don't get it. So, so you hit them on the head with your phone and knock them out? No, you just swipe someone's picture, they come over and you plow them. Wow, I gotta try this. So just my point. I mean, think about how much the dating scene has changed just in these past few decades. You have all these apps at your fingertips. You can have a date maybe that night with someone on the other side of the city instantly. So take for example, you have, I mean, J-Date, OkCupid, okay Plenty of Fish, Tinder, you name it. Again, everything is just right there immediately. So you know, in a really short amount of time, we went from about here. I'd enjoy going to the weenie roast very much, unless you'd rather go bowling. No, I'd rather go to the weenie roast. To somehow getting over here. Are you Courtney from Tinder? You must be Glenn. I got you these, a lovely bouquet for a lovely. Yeah, take off your pants and sit on the coffee table. Okay. So, as you can see from the apps, it does have a lot of benefits. You can meet a lot of people really quick. You don't have to go through all the formalities of trying to meet each individual person through a friend of a friend of a friend. You can just press a button, maybe have a date lined up just that night. You might have four or five dates lined up just that week. But there's good and there's bad to it because now that you have all this exposure to different people, well, the rate of exposure to these, these different STDs go up like exponentially. So you're you're kind of playing Russian roulette. You never know when the bullet's gonna fire. Look, I totally understand. Maybe it's a Friday night, you're just doing the home thing where you chill at the couch for a little bit. Um, your boys are out with all the homies, maybe your girl is out with her boyfriend, so you're just chilling for the night. I'm guessing your evening probably went a little something like this. All right, so it's a Friday afternoon, Friday evening. You decide to wrap it up for the night and hang out on the couch. So you're a little bit bored, what do you do? You get on Tinder, see which cuties are out for the evening. Maybe you might make a friend for the weekend. All right, but as you swipe, you notice that pickings can be a little slim, but you keep trying it out and lo and behold, you come across that one match. And that's when you think to yourself, I took a deep breath, I looked at my friends, I was like, it's about to go down. All right, so you're probably wondering, well, how did the date go? Well, the answer to that is pretty well. Actually, really well. You, you know what I'm talking about. 
So it went down, just like he wanted it to. And he started feeling pretty good about the whole weekend excursion until maybe about five to 10 days later. Cause around that time is when some symptoms started to arise. So this brings us to the portion of the segment called, you might have herpes if. For ladies, you might have had more general um, symptoms, maybe a little headache, uh, feeling like you're under the weather, tired, dizziness, things like that. For the fellas though, maybe when you go to, you go to the bathroom, you might see a little bit of, let's see, some fluid filled vesicles, little bumps on your genital area, and you know something's up. Maybe even some lesions going on. But we know that something wasn't the way it was when you left it. And then that's where we have the issue now. Now, a little bit about herpes. It's a virus, so much like the other viruses, once it's yours, it's yours forever. I know it sucks so much, but it doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but it just means uh, it's gonna be a lot of discussions for any future significant other that you come across. Uh, you just have to maintain it. Now, a little bit of history about the herpes virus is that it, there are actually two forms. First one is HSV-1, or herpes simplex virus 1. Herpes simplex virus 2 is the other. You might be asking yourself, what's the difference between the two? Well, the first one, HSV-1, is going to be found more in the oral area. You might have noticed it when you see pictures with people, or you might have actually come across someone with, you know, pretty unsightly little lesion or bump or fluid-filled vesicle on the lip. Um, that could be a very telltale sign of uh, having herpes simplex 1. HSV2, on the other hand, is, you guessed it, at the bottom. Yeah, it's gonna be found in your genital area. Um, again, you can find a lot of lesions, sometimes uh, vesicles. Depends on how each person, um, their immune response displays it. See, the thing is, a lot of people have it and they don't even know that they do have it because we present things differently. Researchers tested a bunch of people and when they actually tested them, they showed that about 90% of them had it had no clue. But upon further questioning, they started realizing they did show some signs that something was wrong. Maybe if it was lesions, maybe it was bumps, even anal itching. Sometimes they had small signs that when you add them together plus their sexual history, yeah, you might be surprised what you might find out. Sometimes your body's telling you, you're just not listening. Meanwhile, <laughs> So the way I look at it is you can either A, go out and have all the fun you ever wanted, go partying, not worrying about covering it up, have the occasional STD or two, and have to worry about the occasional ulcer and cold sore from time to time. Or B, you could actually head down to the nearest 7-Eleven, pick up a condom or two, wrap it up, and save yourself a lot of the heartaches and pain of having to deal with cold sores and maybe the leaky vesicles here and there but just something to think about, I'll leave it up to you. As for me, I don't know about you guys, uh, but your boy has a date tonight. So like I said, shoot me an email down below if you have any questions, um, press the subscribe button, we'll go over the medications next time. But in the meantime, um, it's your boy, Dr. James E. The Fresh Pharmacist, signing out. Also hoping she doesn't chew with her mouth open. I don't know. Well, anyways, peace, catch you later. Oh